Hello. This session that I'm proposing today is about assessing using real life situations, giving the students the possibility to work on tasks which are directly related with their daily life, um, which theoretically means uh, that students will be more motivated and engaged towards their learning process. So the title of this session is going to be performance based tasks tasks which are based on a performance and something that the students will produce and will do and this has a practical side of things. So the objectives of this session basically are these three. The first one is discussing um, how can we design a summative assessment task which is related with the requirements of the subject we teach and the example that I'm going to use is an example for history or another one for arts. Uh, but there will be many um, examples and if you wish to have examples for another particular subject please make sure that you write that down in the chat of this video the second option will be or the session, second objective sorry will be to develop an understanding of the relation between the topic the theme that we're teaching and this summative task that we are preparing or this performance-based task that we are preparing and finally to develop specific specific verifications for that task making sure that we indicate the students what are we assessing and what are the objectives for them to complete that particular task. So before we start, let's have a look at the profile of the students that we have in our classrooms. So maybe you're familiar with the baby boom generation, uh, or maybe you're familiar with the Z generation, the generation Z. Basically what we have is that this is a comparison between our generation, well, depending how old are you, uh, but if you're around your 50s, that you are a baby boomer. And, and in green, you have your profile. When, you, when, when we were in school, we were expected to be verbal, uh, be able to sit and listen, and, and our teachers were teachers, and we're looking for job security, and, and, and have a curriculum-centered learning process, uh, close to books, close to papers, close to specific resources. The generation that we have in our classroom are very different. They are visual learners. Um, and maybe you don't follow the principles of Garner's uh, learning styles, but in any case, they prefer to watch, to see what they're learning. They want to try. So they're a little bit kinesthetic on that as well. They don't see the teacher as a teacher, but as a facilitator, as somebody who guides them through their learning process. They are flexible, so they might live in different countries, have different professions, need to be prepared for different um, expectations. They like to collaborate. They like the curriculum to be centered in their own profile. And they don't have books, they have the world with internet, with connected devices. Um, and basically, they have 92% uh, of their time spent online. Their attention span is eight seconds. Just imagine, by now, you will be asleep already if you were a Generation Z student. Uh, they consume between two to four hours of video content a day, plus, plus 10 or more hours of use of technology. So we need to produce tasks and assessments which are adapted to the reality of those students in our classrooms. How do they learn? And, 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 and this is a study done by Barnes Noble College. It says that 51% they need examples. They do by working through examples. 38% need to see, so they need to read course material, and only 12% do it by listening. So basically, we need to come up with strategies and assessment strategies that meet their profile in terms of doing things, in terms of taking part of the learning process and the assessment process. So based on these, based on the Generation Z aspects, we can say that a performance-based task is any learning activity or assessment that asks students to perform, to demonstrate their knowledge, their understanding, their proficiency. So this performance task must be tangible and must serve as an evidence of learning. So keep in mind the idea of perform, keep in mind the idea of a tangible product, and keep in mind the idea of being able to evidence the learning process through the task that we're going to propose. So what defines a performance-based task is all these different six definitions. The first one is the application of knowledge, but also the application of skills, being communication, 
collaboration, being critical thinking skills, being media literacy skills. Those tasks do not have to have a correct answer. They should be open-ended. The answer should be depending on the process. The answer should lead to a discussion, to a debate. The students should have the chance to come up with their own answer to a proposed question. Those tasks must be contextualized with real life. They need to present a context that fits into the real life of the students. They need to have a higher order thinking. So the command term that we're going to use must hit the higher order aspects, analyzing, for example, being one of them. This task could or should integrate subjects because we're preparing students for professions that don't exist yet. So they need to have the knowledge and the content of many subjects in order to be able to answer, to give an answer to those tasks, to perform. So they must approach the idea of interdisciplinary tasks and they need a precise rubric to be assessed. So students need to know what is expected from them exactly when uh, completing, completing a performance-based task. So a good performance-based task requires students to use their critical thinking skills, their problem-solving skills, and their metacognition. And we're going to discuss what metacognition is, but I would like you to keep in mind the idea of critical thinking and problem-solving. So critical thinking is the capacity you have to look at aspects from a critical perspective, being able to argue, to debate, to discuss, to present different ideas, different opinions, different views. The problem solving is the capacity to give a solution to a concrete and um, um, a big problem. And in order to do that, students should be able to develop their metacognition strategies. So what is metacognition? I think the best way of defining it is thinking about thinking. So helping students to think, to reflect in the way they learn, reflect in the way they think, and try to bring an open-minded approach to their learning process. So all these are the performance-based tasks. As you can see, quite challenging to put in place, quite challenging to implement, but I'm going to share with you one type of task, which is very important and very easy to implement as a performance-based task. However, I would like you to first step back and reflect about yourself. How do you learn? What's the best way for you to learn? Do you like to listen, to write, to take notes, to watch, to do? I would like you to think in moments where you have used a strategy that particularly work, that works particularly well for you. And how do you know that it works? What makes you think, what makes you decide that that strategy is effective for you? And then I would like you also to, to think, do you change in the process of learning? When you learn something, halfway through, have you ever changed? the approach, the view, the way in which you learn. And then try to see as well, when you produce a task for the students, do you want the students to know why are they doing it? Do you think your students need to have an explanation of the purpose of the task? What's the point? That's the basic question, isn't it? How many times has it happened to you that you attend the subject and you complete a task and then you think, why do I need these? In which way these tasks, these assessment, is going to be needed in my immediate future. So think about all these, all these questions when you create the task for your student. So um, let's see, uh, let's think about assessment then because that's what we're going to do today, isn't it? We're going to produce a performance-based task, so we need to think about what is assessment. So what is for you authentic assessment? Can you try to bring a definition? And if you do, if you want these sessions to be interactive, because this is the, the main intention, can you please write in the chat of the video? And then I will see to what extent we can find answers to your proposal. So what is authentic assessment? So what is the difference between a current assessment and an authentic one? What does make assessment authentic? And then think about what type of assessment do you implement right now in your lessons? Is it authentic then? Does it meet into your definition of authentic assessment? If it does, good, you're on the right track. If it does not, then maybe you need to revisit your assessment strategies to make them authentic to your students. That's important. 
So basically, if we look at the assessment, we have two types of assessment. You have the cycle of the formative assessment that is basically you teach or you facilitate, <laughs> you use the word you prefer. Um, then you collect evidence during the lesson, being by questioning, being by putting in place some worksheets, some um, games, some quizzes. And then you analyze the evidence that you collect from the students. And then you, of course, give feedback to your students about that evidence that you collected and you analyzed. And then, of course, you reflect on your own teaching and you adjust your teaching strategies to then teach again and go back to this circle of collecting, analyzing evidence, giving feedback and adjusting teaching. This is the formative assessment, isn't it? Is, is when, when, for example, you're a football coach and then you have your trainings, your weekly trainings, when you stop things and you correct things and you give evidence and then you give feedback and then reflect on your coaching and then you go back to it. When at some point you make a judgment, when you analyze your evidence and you make a judgment on that evidence and then you grade it and then you report it, this is when you're produce, you, you put in place a summative task. And this is what we want to do to create a task that makes a judgment, grades following whichever criteria you follow, be it an IB school, be it an American system, be it a British system, be it a national system, and then you report by giving feedback to the students, in this case, written feedback, being in the report card or being on a piece of paper. So summative assessments, basically these are the ones that we're going to look at in order to produce the performance-based tasks, is when we teachers make a judgment throughout the year, being at the end of the unit, being whatever we think it must be done. And these are the performance-based assessments that we're going to look at and must be authentic, which means that whatever definition you came up with in terms of authentic assessment, these needs to meet this type of assessment. Then we're going to use specific objectives to be assessed, to be developed on that task. And finally, the students will need to put in place skills to be able to master that assessment and to be ready to be successful. So think about content, but also think about skills that students need to develop in order to be successful in those performance based tasks. So what is it? What is this performance based learning and assessment? In the act of learning, people obtain content, knowledge, skills. That's what I was saying before. And they will try to apply all these, all what they've learned into a real world situation. So we're going back into the idea of linking the assessment to real world, to engage, to motivate, and to have successful students that see the purpose of what they're doing and, and give sense to their learning process. Types of performance-based tasks, many, and I'm sure you can come up with many other examples that I would like you to share those examples in the chat. Debates, presentations, portfolios, performance for visual arts, for performing arts, um, projects, collaboration projects, individual projects, exhibits, fairs, interdisciplinary activities where, where students integrate the knowledge of two or more subjects, STEM projects, many, many options, but I'm going to focus in one of them, which is the GRASPs. Okay, so this comes from the publication that you have at the bottom of the slide, Understanding by Design, um, um, and basically it's to propose an activity. GRASP stands for Goal, Role, Audience, Situation, Product, and Standards. So I'm going to give you an example of this GRASP activity using a history unit, which was a history on Nazi Germany that I just did with my grade 10 year 9 students or MYP5 if you're in the IB program. Yeah. So basically you're going to give a goal to the student which can meet the objective of the lesson or the unit. You will ask the students to be somebody, not a student of course, somebody else, somebody that is part of that topic. Then they will have an audience. You will give them a context, so a situation. You will ask them to create something, a product, a performance, and then you will give some standards, some objectives to assess. Okay, so this is my example. My example is a, a history example and um, I was teaching Nazi Germany and I was, my intention was to have the students understanding that the causes of conflict are the defense of community and personal ideologies. So by talking about Nazi Germany, we were understanding the concepts of cause, conflict, ideologies. So at some point I gave them this grasp activity. 
So I want my students to show through their product or their project that the causes of a conflict are the defense of community and personal ideologies. So, for example, some of the students I said, okay, your role can be that you're a German soldier coming back from World War One. You can be a, a British soldier in the trenches. You can be a nurse in the trenches. You can be a father or a mother that just sent her two children to the front and she's worried about the children being dead. You can be a doctor. You can be, you can be whoever you want to be as a student, whatever interest you have. The audience in this case will be uh, voters in Munich in 1933. So you need to produce a speech to convince people to vote for you in 1933. And this is your situation. You have been starving for the last months because of Versailles agreements and because of the unemployment and the economical situation of Germany. So basically I gave a context which fits into my topic, into my theme. And I gave the students the chance to reflect, to think critically about a role that they might have had in that period in Germany, understanding that they could be empathetic and be in the place of a German person in 1933. And I will ask them to produce a speech. But this could lead into, for example, you being a nurse and writing a letter to your husband, for example. And then you will have your role, your audience will be your husband, the situation, you were a nurse in the front, and the product will be the letter. So you can have many, many examples, isn't it? If you think about it, I'm sure you can come up with, with thousands of examples. And of course, on the right-hand side, what I have is the objectives. What am I going to assess? I want my students to use a wide range of vocabulary. I want them to develop communication skills. I want them to develop perspectives, implications, ideologies use the critical thinking, use their media literacy. So this is what I'm going to assess. So as you can see, it's a real life situation. It's meaningful, it's got a point. It doesn't have a right or a wrong answer, but students will come up with the right answer. They will come up with their own product. They are free to produce whatever they want, being a PowerPoint, being a role play, being a recording, being a, an interview recorded on video. Um, many, many products, they can come up with many, many different techniques depending on what are they interested in. Another example, it can be done through visual arts, yeah? And I would like to, you to look at these pictures and, and guess what are these students doing? So I'm gonna tell you what they're doing. They're doing a performance-based task because they are trying to represent or to, to experience what Michelangelo was doing when he was painting the Sistine Chapel. So it's not the same thing to draw the Sistine Chapel sitting comfortable in your desk and then on your chair and then write it with good technology, with the light, with, with electricity, with different color pencils, that do it like Michelangelo did, which was lying, up, lying upside down with a little uh, um, um, light in, in there um, um, and, then, and, then, and then see how that affected the production of the Sistine Chapel. So the goal of the students will be to show that aesthetic of a piece of art changes when its context of creation is understood. All of a sudden, when you understand uh, that in the way a painting has been produced, all of a sudden you admire the painter and you see the difficulties that he had through the process. So the role of the students will be, you're Michelangelo, Michelangelo. You're an artist from the Renaissance. And your audience is the Pope, Julius II, the one who asked Michelangelo to paint the Sistine Chapel. And then the situation is that you're an artist from the Renaissance that has been asked to paint one of the most beautiful pieces of art in history. And the product is to understand the circumstances and the context of the painting of the Sistine Chapel. And this is what the students are actually doing in the previous slide. They are looking at the way in which Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel, so they're able to contextualize the learning. Give it a go. Um, um, I would like you to use one of your existing units and create a task which is performance based and adapted to your unit. And then why not? What about sharing your experience in this chat and see to what extent we, call, we, we can all interact, in particular now during this pandemic and online has become the main learning tool. So it will be great to hear from you and, and to have some examples that we can all um, uh, share in order to become all best practitioners in, in teaching.
So in case you want to know more about performance-based tasks, primary-based sources, Generation Z information, feel free to access any of these websites. And thank you very much for listening. And, and please let me know if you found this presentation useful. See you next time. Thank you. Bye.